Hello everyone. In this video, we will be covering um, uh, chapter one. So this will be an introduction to everything that will be covered on the class. The class is technically divided into two main parts, statistics and probability. Uh, we'll get into more of that in a little bit. The first thing you need to understand is that statistics is actually very, very, very easy. In statistics, there is only four things you have to, to do. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. That's it. Probability is a little more, more tricky, and we'll get to that eventually. The reason why people think statistics is a little more difficult is because you have to do two things that you're not used to, to do. First, you have to think. So people don't like to think. So you will be given a data set of 10 points. You need to think which one you have to add, which one you have to subtract, and which one you have to divide, and so forth. The second reason why people find uh, stats difficult is because there is a lot of war problems. And for some reason, people don't like war problems. But pretty much what you're doing in statistics is add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And remember, you can use a calculator now, so you don't even need to know how to do that anymore. Okay, so let's let's stay let's start with the class. So statistics is the science of planning studies and experiments, obtaining data, and then organizing, summarizing, presenting, analyzing, interpreting, and drawing conclusions, and everything is going to be based on data. In this class, we're going to focus mainly on the last part here, presenting, analyzing, interpreting, and drawing conclusions. Now, statistics is pretty much divided into two main categories. And the two main categories are descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. So these two combined is technically the same as this definition. This is just broken down into two parts. Descriptive statistics consists of the methods of organizing and summarizing um, data. So there are two parts to this, graphical representation and descriptive measures. You should think of uh, statistics like you were going to learn how to, to cook. The descriptive statistics is like the ingredients. You cannot cook anything without the ingredients, but just because you have the ingredients, it doesn't mean you know how to, to cook. So descriptive statistics would be like the ingredients you were cooking. So in chapter two, we will deal with the graphical representation. So it will be chapter two. And in chapter three, we will do the descriptive measures. The graphical representation will be something like histograms, bar, bar graphs, etc. The descriptive measures are going to be something like the mean, the median, the mode and so forth okay, okay now uh inferential statistics this is like the actual cooking you cannot do the cooking without the ingredients so inferential statistics is going to consist of methods for analyzing interpreting and drawing conclusions everything based on on data like i said before this depends a hundred percent on descriptive statistics so we're gonna deal with this in chapter 7 to chapter 10 now this is the part that people are gonna find a little tricky this depends on probability theory probability theory is technically in the analogy of cooking like learning how to use the stove if you don't have a stove even if you are very good cooking and you had ingredients without the stove or the tools, you're not gonna be able to cook anything. So this is the part that some people might find a little hard because this is different than statistics. The good news is that you only have to worry about two chapters, chapter four to chapter six. Okay. As you saw already, we have talked about data multiple times. So data is just a collection of observations or the information that we will be uh, working with. 
so it could be anything we're interested in like the height of people the salary of people the color eyes of people or any, anything we want to uh, look into now data is technically divided into two types is either quantitative or is a qualitative okay so here is the quantitative and we'll talk about the qualitative in a little bit now quantitative means is a quantity or is numerical you have to be careful with the word numerical because just because something is a number it doesn't mean it's a quantity for example if you look to this which is a zip code it's clearly a number but it's not a it's not a quantity so this is how you know a number is not a quantity if you have another zip code and if you add both of them it actually has no meaning if you add to these two numbers it doesn't mean anything so that's how you know a number is not really a, a quantity now once you know you have a quantity quantitative variables are divided into two categories they are either discrete or they are continuous well here are two examples of discrete variables the number of cats per household the number of students at abc college could be anything like that notice how discrete usually starts with the number so this could be like the number of cats in Camden College and so forth okay so the uh, the way to distinguish the sentence is discrete discrete means that you can count so it can be counted so the data can be can be counted for example the number of cars somebody can have the smallest number of cars is zero then you have one two three four and so forth it doesn't mean you could finish counting them but that means you can count them if you want the same thing would apply to this one and this one now chapter three to chapter five it will be only discrete uh variables and we will talk in detail about discrete random variables later now if the quantity is not discrete so if it is not discrete then it has to be continuous so here are two examples of continuous variables the speed of a car the amount of sugar and energy drinks notice how continuous doesn't start with the number of so continuous usually will be speed amount or time for example another could be the length of a human uh, pregnancy okay now if discrete means you can count it then continuous means it cannot be counted but it doesn't mean it cannot be measured so we'll still be able to measure it we'll just not be able to count it now this is what i mean by by continuous let's say that you're driving on the on the freeway and even if you use a uh, cruise control it will be almost impossible it's actually impossible to keep the car going at 60 miles per hour why because the um, uphills downhills turns and so forth so it will be impossible to keep it at 65 so therefore there is no way you can count all the speeds but it is possible to keep the car between 60 and 70 miles per hour so this will be possible but this will be impossible to do and therefore there is an infinite number of speeds between 60 and 70 like the car 
could go as 60.1, 60.13, and so forth. So you will never finish counting the the total number of uh, speeds. Now, don't get too hang up on this idea. For now, the best way to think about the two is that discrete means uh, starts with the number of usually and continuous will be speed, amount, length, and so forth. All right, so remember that data is either quantitative, this is what we talked in the last page, and if it is quantitative, it's either discrete or if it is uh, continuous, okay? Now, I forgot to mention this on the last slide, but chapter six to chapter 10, everything will be uh, continuous. Okay? Now, if the data is not quantitative, then the data will be qualitative and is usually called categorical. So this doesn't involve any any quantities. This will be a quality. An example of this would be zip codes, religion, political affiliation, and so forth. Social economic status, eye color, um, hair color and so forth. So there's a lot of, lot of this. It could also be like nationality and so forth. Okay. Now, this is the um, approach we're going to use the whole, whole semester. It will be quantitative or qualitative and then discrete or uh, continuous. Now, in the social sciences, since some of you are going to study social sciences there is a way to define these two variables in a different way and it's called level of measurement you still kind of you still want to have qualitative and you still want to have quantitative but the definitions are different and it's already useful to see at least at least one so here it is so this time we start with the the qualitative which is the categorical remember this is not a quantity this one is divided into two two categories. It's either nominal or is ordinal. Nominal means that there is no natural ordering, which means there is no universal agreement of which one is uh, better or which one should go first. Okay. For example. Uh, which one is better, a Democrat or a Republican? Well, you will never, never agree. Now, this is not a issue if it was a quantity because two is clearly less than than three. But here, if you ask a Republican, they will say that they are better than the Democrats, and if you ask a Democrat, they will say they are better than Republicans, and so forth. Now, another example of this could be. Um, like a car model, people will never agree which car is better. Gender, uh, like cell phones, which one is better, an iPhone or a Samsung, people will never, never agree. Okay? Now, the next um, qualitative variable using the level of measurement is called ordinal. And ordinal is, remember that these are not quantities, they are just qualities, but here there is a universal agreement. So there is a universal agreement of which one is better or which one should go first. The most basic example of this are grades. Everybody agrees that an A is greater than a B, greater than a C, and so forth, which these are not quantities, these are just um, qualities. Okay? There are many, many of these examples, mostly used in the social sciences. Another one, it will be like uh, size of clothes. For example, everybody knows that small is less than medium, less than large, less than extra large, and so forth. There are multiple examples of this. You could also use uh, military rankings and so forth 
Okay. Now, if the um, variable is not quanti qualitative, remember it has to be a quantity, before this was discrete and continuous, now this is either interval or ratio. The interval is a little tricky and there are very few examples of this. Interval means that zero is not really zero. And that's a little tricky to to see first and that's why we don't have too many examples. But remember zero usually means the absence of something. Here, zero doesn't mean that. So for example, let's say you have three people taking a IQ test. Let's say that the first one gets 100 points, the second one gets 200, which I don't think is possible. Let's say somebody gets 200. Well, clearly, this one is higher than this one, but you cannot really say that this is twice as smart as this one. And the reason why is because zero doesn't exist. This is what I mean by zero doesn't exist. If somebody takes the test and gets a zero, it doesn't mean that the person has no intelligence. It just means that the person didn't care about the test or just didn't bother to answer any of the questions. Another typical example here is uh, temperature. Okay. So if today it's 40 degrees and tomorrow is 80 degrees, well, clearly 80 is higher than 40, but 80 doesn't mean it's twice as hot as 40. Actually, you should you can check them. Now, if the temperature is zero degrees, it doesn't mean there's no temperature. It just means it's very, it's very, very cold. Okay. So here, the reason why this is tricky is because zero doesn't, doesn't exist. Now, in our modern day technology, Let's say that somebody posts something in Instagram and then after two hours, three hours, four hours, whatever, it has zero views. Does that mean nobody saw it? No, it just means that nobody liked it, but it doesn't mean nobody saw the video. Okay? All right, now, ratio is what we actually call discrete and continues, and here zero is zero. So you have three people, if the first one has a hundred dollars, and the second one was 200, clearly this is more than this, and not only that, this time you can be sure that this is twice as big as this one, which is something you couldn't say in here. Okay? Now, if somebody has uh, zero dollars, well, that means they have no money at all. So, way is an example of this. Salary is another example of this. The speed of a car, an example of this. The number of, of cats in Canton, and so forth. Okay? So, these are examples of two ratio variables. Remember that this one was uh, continuous and this one is discrete. In this slide, we'll describe the main idea of statistics. In statistics, you're gonna have something that is called the population. Now, the population is gonna be the collection of all possible outcomes to be studies, scores, people, measurements, etc. Now, if the population is really, really big, this is actually very hard or impossible to get all possible outcomes, and we'll get to that in a second. But if you were able to get all of them, you will have something that is called a parameter. So a parameter will is a numerical description of whatever outcomes you, you want. The whole semester, we're gonna focus on four, but mainly three, parameters. The first one will be the the mean. So this is going to be the average. So this is the letter mu. The second one is sigma square, which is the variance. 
and the last one is p which is a proportion okay. this is sometimes also called the um, population mean population variance and population uh, proportion because it's based on this now this is really what you want to find but uh, if the example is way too big this is almost impossible to to find for example they said that you wanted to find the average age so this will be the average age of californians okay there is around 30 something million californians let's say it's 34 million so in order for you to find this you will need to have the age of 34 million Californians, which it would be very, very hard, if not impossible to, to figure out this value. So instead, you get a sample. So this is where the statistics comes in. Okay. So you can now find this, which is what you want, or this, which is what you want. So instead you get a sample and this, from the sample, it will be a lot easier because now the population is a lot smaller. It's just a sub-collection of the population. So instead of asking 34 million Californians, it is possible to ask, let's say, 20,000 Californians. This is possible or doable. Okay. Now, uh, every parameter and this is going to be the whole idea of statistics over and over the whole semester. Every parameter is going to have an approximation or a, a statistic. So, for example, x bar is going to be an approximation to this one. And x bar is also called the, the mean, but it will be the sample mean. Then s square will be the sample variance. And this is going to be an approximation to this. And then P with a hat on top is going to be an approximation to the proportion. So what you're going to learn mainly on this class is this. These values you will see that are very, very easy and fast to, to find. So once you find this, and with the use of probability, and the stuff we're going to learn for a statistic, how close are you to the real thing? And that's where the um, making conclusions and inferences when I come in. You will say, well, I'm not sure what this is, but based on this value and based on what we learn from probability, I'm 90, 95% sure that this value is between 20 and 25 or whatever it may be, okay? So this is gonna be the main idea of the whole class. This is what the inferential statistics is going to be about. You're going to use probability to check how good these things are compared to the real thing. Finally, uh, there are some uh, methods to collect data. We're not really going to collect any data in the class, but it's still a good idea to know about the different uh, methods to collect data. The most basic one is called a uh, random sampling. This is the most basic one. And this one says that all members of the population have an equal chance of being selected. One of the most basic ways to accomplish this is to have like a raffle or to pick from a hat, stuff like that. Okay, so every member should have the same chance or equal chance of being selected. The next method is called systematic sampling. At the end of the day, all of them kind of depend on this one anyways, like you will see right now. Systematic sampling means this. You're going to select every K member of a population. For example, let's say you have 200 people. Four and then 20, 21, 22, 199, 200. Okay, you have 200 people. That's the, this is the sample. Okay. 
and from here you're going to select say you want to select 10 people okay. so the most obvious thing will be is since you have 200 people and you're selecting 10 well it would be a good idea to select 20 40 60 80 and so forth but that would not be random so instead from the first 20 people just pick one randomly which you could use the raffle din or any of those methods so let's say that you randomly select the number number two so after that you will pick every number related to two, like 22 and so forth so the t 10 people selected will be 2 22 42 62 all the way to 180 82 so that's how I will do systematic sampling. The next method is called stratified sampling. This one you divide the population into subgroups. You need to have at least two subgroups according to some characteristic. This characteristic could be like male, female. It could be a Republican, Democrat, and so forth whatever we need to have at least two subgroups or strata so for example let's say you have a classroom the most basic way to break this into two groups it will be to pick female and male and then you pick some from here and some from here randomly so let's say the these are the people in this category, these are the people in this category, and then you could select randomly this one, this one, this one, from here, this, this, and this. So that's, that's what it means. Now you can have more than two um, subgroups, like you can further divide this into Republican, Democrat, EU1, and so forth. We need to have at least two. The last one we will look into is called um, cluster sampling. In this one, you divide the population into sections or clusters. Okay. So you need to have at least also two. So let's say that you have, uh, this will be like Beverly Hills. This is Campton. This is uh, Lingwood. And this is Long Beach and so forth. So once you do this, you randomly select the whole um, uh, group. Now this co could potentially be pretty, pretty biased, but you're gonna select the whole group. So everything is gonna be based on this group only, and that could potentially be pretty, pretty biased. Okay. All right, so that's it for uh, Chapter 1.